Everyone, this is three questions with Tori, Jenny, and Melissa. And I got a little intro music. All right. Okay, so we were, I was supposed to do this with Melissa, and I'm actually, as you can see, I'm in a hotel room. If you're watching this, if you're listening to this, my audio is probably not as good as it usually is because I got my, my road mic, which is not as good because the other one's pretty expensive to take on the road, so and it's a little bit fluffier and bigger. But uh, Melissa and I have been talking for a little while because she is leading this book club. I actually had spoke in your school district, Tyler ISD. And then Melissa literally last second says, hey, like, can you, would you ever want Tori and Jenny? I'm like, yeah, I'll invite them on. And she's like, when do you want it? I'm like, invite them today. So that's why we're doing this. <laughs> we're doing this uh, four person podcast. And we're going to start off with three questions. So uh, I think Melissa, so y'all know that, I don't know, Jenny, Tori said she listens to it. Melissa, I know, listens to it. You, I don't know if you listen to it. Oh. <laughs> You're a quick one. You're a quick one. Yeah, you caught on. I have not listened to an That's episode okay. of your That's podcast. Okay. Well, we'll see if you listen to it now. We'll see if you I will. Uh, this is the first one, right? So Pressure's yeah. on. Right. Okay, so, hey, Melissa, we're going to start off with you. And we're going to ask you, um, like, when you think of a teacher who has inspired you, and one of the things I really appreciate about um, you, Melissa, to be honest with you, because I've been watching on Twitter, and it's weird. You're, like, doing some late-night tweeting and stuff like that, but you're obviously continuously growing continuously learning, which is something that I really appreciate about every educator um, that takes the time to do that. So when you think about your growth, when you think about a teacher that has inspired you, who's like someone that comes to your mind right away and, and what do they do to kind of stick out? Okay. So, you know, I've mulled over it for a while um, because unlike Tori and Jenny, I've actually had a lot right, of time to think right. about the podcast. <laughs> um, and so I thought about like teachers who like had like helped me as I was a student. And then I thought, thought about coworkers who have helped me out. Um, but then I was thinking about just how much I've been able to grow and connect outside of like my realms of actual like knowing someone. And I feel like um, some of the best growth I've gotten has actually come like connecting with people like on Twitter or through conferences. And the most impactful teacher to my career has actually been Andy McNair. I don't know if you're familiar with her, but she's actually um, really big in the GT realm. And I was a GT teacher, a Gibson and Talented teacher for 10 years mm -hmm. with the district. And so I actually connected with her at the Texas GT conference. And she was the first person who introduced me to the concept of a genius hour. She's a really um, huge proponent for that. And she's the one that really taught me like what is genius hour and how to leverage um, different tools to be able to connect outside of my classroom. And, um, and I actually shared that with Tori, I think last year, right? Cause you were, we were on a Twitter chat for our districts and you were talking about genius. I was like, Oh my gosh, I have some incredible things to share. And so that was like the first time I think you and I really connected, um, was sharing the things that Andy McNair had shared to me because what she taught me in a session was how to like app smash Google forms with Padlet um, and actually like share the, uh, the, the students make a presentation, just a quick little a synopsis on Padlet of what their research is, who they'd like to connect with, what kind of questions they wanted to ask. And then they attach a Google form that the teacher owns. So then that we just shared it out, like, okay, share this out and you share it out and you share it out, like share it out everywhere. Let's see who we can connect with. And so it's just like a domino effect and you end up getting some amazing people respond, but it all comes through the teacher. So it's like super safe. And then we send information to parents and they help the student make the connection. So like, for example, I had a student who was researching video games because he was hugely into video mm -hmm. games. And so he wanted to research all about it and learn all about um, like maybe that career path. And we actually were able to connect like through like a friend of a friend of a friend with like an actual video game developer, which I would have never been able to connect that child with, nor were their parent. But because of what Annie McNair taught me about how right. to really like leverage those tools to get those outside experts to connect straight with your students. I mean, we've had kids talk to people at SeaWorld. We've had them get to go to sonograms at the hospital. I mean, we've had some amazing connections through what Andy McNair was able to teach us about how to leverage those tools. Where, where, is, where is Andy McNair right now? So she was a GT specialist in Waco. And I think she went actually to the region, the um, okay. Texas, like the ESC there around that right. area. Um, I think she's still there. She's still really big in the GT realm here. Well, this Texas. is, this is the special thing because if Andy McNair just happens to be listening, <laughs> you know what's coming, Andy. <laughs> So this is actually, you know, it's funny because people, 
um, people will reach out to me and like you mentioned about the opportunity to connect with experts in areas, right? Right. And people will reach out to me and they'll say like, oh, I can't believe you're talking to me. Like you wrote Innovator's Mindset, you wrote this book. And I'm like, I can't believe you read my book. Like I am, <laughs> I am way more excited that you reached out to me than probably you are them, you know, reaching out, you know, back. I think a lot of people, you know, people want to talk about those areas that they're passionate about, they're connected right. with, right? And I think yeah. that's one of the disconnects that we, I don't think that in the past people didn't want to connect with people that read their books or, you know, had interest in their, we just didn't have the access, right? right. And I think that to me, I was like, like, you know, my, my friends from high school, they don't were like, oh, George wrote a book. They were like, make fun of me for doing it, right? But like <laughs> people, you know, people appreciate that. And I think, I think it's, I, I think a lot of times we really get excited about the expert that we connect with, but we don't right. identify that sometimes that person who wrote the book is so pumped that yeah. somebody cares about their work, that somebody cares about, because I know like, you know, that's one of the reasons I was really excited to talk with you all today is because I'm like interested in what your thoughts are, on, you know, innovators mindset, because I know you're reading it. Right. Um, there's a lot of you in the district and I, I was just excited to like hear your thoughts and like what some of the things that you pick up from there too. So it's, it's kind of, kind of neat to do that. So, and if you're listening, look at, look at all the impact that you're making on kids all over the place. Right. So Tori, we're going to go to you now, because I know you said um, that you wanted to talk about an administrator. And I know that if you don't talk about a certain administrator, you might get in trouble. So I don't know if that's <laughs> So when you think about like an admin who's made an impact on you, who's somebody that sticks out your mind and why? Yeah, this question is super easy to me, mainly because I've only taught under two principles and I, I've loved both of them. But uh -oh, I mean, don't get me wrong. I loved both of them. 50 50. You know, a few years ago, Mr. Brett Shelby came to Jack and he has been a huge inspiration for me as far as teaching and how I view teaching. He's actually the one that recommended the innovator's mindset to me. Oh, cool. Way back then. So he's a super fan. And so, yeah, this one's easy for me. He is always encouraging us to be innovative and try things outside of the box, innovate outside, mm -hmm. inside of the box. Well, you, and, can say, you can say the other one. That's fine. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> and so um, for me, it's, I think it's one thing to say, you know, we could, principals can tell their teachers, admin can tell their teachers, oh, go be innovative go take these risks. But if you don't have that tr trust and support to where if you fall when you're mm -hmm. taking these risks and you're doing these innovative things and they don't work, if you don't feel comfortable enough to do that with your admin, then what's the point, you know? Right. So it's one thing to encourage teachers to do that. And then it's another thing to encourage them to do that, but also be there to support them when it's successful and when it fails. So for me, it's a big thing to know that if I do do something out of the box and, you know, crazy and coming up out of the back of my mind with it, I know that Mr. Shelby is going to be there to help me if I fall. If it succeeds, I know he'll be there to support mm -hmm. me. Um, and then if I do fail, then I know he's going to be there to help me come up with a plan to make it successful. So uh, I love all of my principles, but he has definitely been one that has really changed my mindset on school and education and what I'm doing in my classroom right now. Love it. Brett, if Brett's listening, you get the, and especially because you like the new of mine. <laughs> so I, I gotta, I gotta point out a couple of things. First of all, sorry, I don't know if he's at it, but I was gonna point out, you did say doo doo. Do do. Uh, I'm a toddler, so, so it say, doesn't surprise you, me. You, I, that is my. I will never grow up enough to never point out if someone. Okay. Okay. Say do do. It's fair do enough. Do. I'm like, okay, so I. Love that. <laughs> I feel like listeners would be disappointed if I didn't point it out because I I've done this several times. Okay, so that that the second thing, one of the things that you said about Brett, I think probably is what makes you all great teachers. And I think that's really necessary in, in admin is that do you create a culture where people are willing to take risks, try things, and they know if you, if you struggle, they got your back? Because if you don't do that, then why would teachers create that same atmosphere for their students, right? Because I think a lot of times um, I've watched administrators say like, hey, you need to take risks, try something different. And then when that different doesn't work, then they say, oh, like, why did you do that, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, okay, you say it because it sounds good but you know, in practice, and then teachers get terrified to try different things with kids. 
And I don't think anybody, I, I think a lot of times when we talk about risk, I don't think we're it, like people kind of insinuate. I love that you're Dance in break. school right now. No, this is great. Dance break. This is great because this is realistic, right? Because you're in school right now and you're trying to save money. The motion sensors, I love it. So, so like when you have those opportunities and like if kids, is nobody just pushing kids off a hill and just hoping for the best, right? Like all our risks are calculated, right? They're very well thought out and, you know, like there's, there's a bigger purpose to it. We're not just like do whatever, like run with scissors, see what happens, right? I don't think that's that's a connection. So I, I appreciate that. Um, and so, Brett, hopefully if you're listening to a special shout out, um, and because again, I think I think one of the things as I'm listening to, to, to you all is is really thinking about all of the kids who've been impacted by these people who have impacted you, right? And I think that's something that we, we, we don't talk about enough in education. So Jenny, you're the last one. And so this is the, this is a question, man. I know you're all amazing learners. You model it openly um, through social media, which is, which is one of the reasons why I love connecting with you all today. So when you look back, when you first started teaching, what, what advice would you give to yourself? Like, what would you go back and say, like, hey, this is something that, you know, maybe don't focus on this, maybe you need to focus on this. What would you, if you could talk to yourself in your first year, what advice would you give to yourself? Well, technically, I'm just a second year teacher this year. I started um, in February of 2020. I was hired in February 2020, and then we shut down a month later. So I was really? a virtual Oh I was a virtual pre-K teacher um, for several months, and then we came back in person in the fall of 2020, but that was technically my first year teaching. Um, as a first-year teacher, it was really difficult for me to stray from the curriculum because you know, you need a plan as a first year teacher. And you just like, for me, I just grasped onto that curriculum, like for dear life, mm -hmm. like it was my lifeline and I couldn't go and stray from it if, and I didn't even think of ideas. I was just so focused on, okay, well, I have to get this done because I have to teach these things and these kids need to be at this point by the end of the year. Um, but it's okay if you want to, break from that and you have something interesting that you want to talk about, it's okay to not teach your curriculum for a day or a half a day mm -hmm. and teach something that excites you. So that was, that would be something I would tell myself for sure. Um, because I was so strict on the curriculum, but, um, like for example, Tori Denny and I just recently had a Diwali party in her room. Mm -hmm. Um, I taught Diwali to my pre-K students. We made traditional Diwali sweets. We shared them with Miss Denny's class and then we did an instructional Diwali dance, um, and took some videos and pictures in her classroom. So that's something that we can teach our students. It's not going to be in any curriculum, but it teaches so many things. I love, I love that. Like, I don't, I don't think I've ever asked anybody who was like so close to their first year. <laughs> this question. So it's like, I would have told myself like three days ago, <laughs> I should have done this. I love that. So when I, when I was thinking about this, I, I actually remember um, one of my administrators that I worked with when I was uh, his assistant principal in his art <clears throat> excuse me. And we were, having like basically a day of celebration in our school and one of the teachers was like oh what if we miss this day of curriculum you know and he's like if you can't miss a day of curriculum then we got bigger issues that we're going to deal with right because i think a lot of times you think about those environments that you create where you have celebrations where you have opportunities to get to know kids and connect them that trust that's built and those relationships that are built accelerates everything mm -hmm. so if you just focus on the curriculum but you have no relationship you're going to have probably lots of classroom management issues you're going to you know struggle with a ton of things so i i, I think that advice is is really pertinent because i think that when you build relationships it does speed up everything that you actually do because i'm more likely to get stuff done quickly when there is that trust built and obviously it's a theme throughout this podcast so i, I love the advice I'm so pumped to talk to you, um, to all of you more on the next podcast. So um, thanks for being here today. Thanks for uh, saying doo-doo. That made my day. <laughs> so I loved it. Anyways, thanks everyone for listening. I hope you have a wonderful day.